I was born with a strange gift. The ability to see what no human being has ever seen before. It's all mixed up in my head. The images, the sounds, the smell. I need to remember. Put things in order right up to this moment. Remember who I am. If I had to say how it all began, I might just as well start here. Beyond Two Souls is the latest in Quantic Dream's quest to combine Hollywood-style filmmaking and the realm of interactive entertainment, and meets with varying degrees of success. From a technical perspective, it's a fantastic achievement, featuring some of the most realistic motion-captured facial animations yet in a video game. Everything else, however, doesn't quite meet those same standards. Like previous effort, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls is less of a game and more of an interactive film. Playing like a modern day version of Dragon's Lair, most gameplay consists of mashing or holding the right button or flicking the right analog stick when the proper prompt appears. Get it right, and the next scene plays. Get it wrong, and, well, the next scene still plays, but it's a bit different. The controls work for the most part, but are most problematic during the choreographed fight scenes. Rather than throwing up on-screen directional prompts, you have to move the analog stick in the direction Jody is either moving or attacking. It can be a bit hard to read at times, though it's practically impossible to fail, and you can leave the controller untouched for large sections of the game and still end up progressing the plot just the same. There's just enough interactivity to be considered a game, but you'll be spending most of your time watching the intricately rendered cutscenes throughout most of the 8 or so hours you'll be playing. When Heavy Rain debuted, this style of quasi-game was new, different, exciting. Now, it just feels like more of the same. Other than a few additions to the overall proceedings, Beyond Two Souls feels strikingly similar in play to its predecessor. This time, in addition to controlling Jody, you also control Aiden, a ghost connected to her by some kind of spiritual umbilical cord. As Aiden, you'll be able to move through walls, possess people, or move objects, all by holding down L1 and moving the analog sticks. There are moments where you'll have to distract guards by knocking over trash cans, or take control of someone in order to gain access to some restricted area. It's a bit arbitrary as to who or what you can interact with, as it's entirely dictated by the scene you're in, but it's enough to change up the general quick time event madness most of the rest of the game seems so obsessed with. It's your room. This is where you'll study and sleep for the next three years. The training starts tomorrow at 5 a.m. Don't be late. Beyond Two Souls does a fantastic job of presenting the illusion of agency and urgency, though your input largely doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Like Heavy Rain before it, Beyond reacts to your choices in some surface level ways, changing up minor details or story beats here and there. It seems that your overall choices matter even less than they did in Heavy Rain, with your particular ending only determined by a few choices within the last hour or so of play. Because the gameplay is so rudimentary, this entire experience rests upon the shoulders of its story. And honestly, it's not terrible. Beyond Two Souls follows 15 years of the life of Jodie Holmes, and her literal connection to otherworldly spirit Aiden. Told out of sequence, you'll watch as Jodie deals with her special circumstances, from living in a lab, to working for the CIA, to running from said agency. It's a veritable roller coaster ride of emotion and excitement, even though much of the tension that should exist is lost because you can't exactly fail. Ellen Page turns in a solid performance as Jody, and while her character seems the least developed, that's mostly because her actions are largely dictated by your choices. You can decide if she opens up to her friends at a party, or if she falls in love, or how she reacts to specific lines of dialogue. Willem Dafoe does about as well as you'd expect, playing Dr. Nathan Hawkins, a sort of surrogate father to Jody as she spends time in his lab. Kadeem Hardison and Eric Winter also turn in fine performances, though their characters aren't nearly as developed by the end of the game, leading to some questionable character interactions, specifically with Winters' character. Overall, the performances are pretty good and are a far cry from the hammy or a gammy killer delivery of Heavy Rain. Where Beyond Two Souls truly succeeds is in providing the quiet moments between explosive chases or fight scenes. You'll play with dolls in your room, try to make a date go off smoothly, go busking on a sidewalk. These experiences that highlight our day-to-day -day lives seem absolutely unheard of in a video game, but they go a long way to humanizing Jody's plight. 
They're something we don't see enough in video games, and frankly, I wish we had more of them. Unfortunately, it tries a little bit too hard to try to tug at your heartstrings, and pulls some pretty cheap tricks in the process to accomplish its goals. One scene in particular resorts to using an attempted rape and quickly follows it up with an opportunity to exact incredibly gruesome vengeance. It felt cheap and exploitative when they tried to pull this off in Heavy Rain, and it feels cheap and exploitative now. It's a shortcut to get us to feel strong emotion for Jody. This scene comes out of nowhere with no explanation and is tossed away just as quickly. Quantic Dream is also pretty infamous for the third acts of the games. That is, they've usually been pretty terrible, especially in comparison to the rest of the game that came before. While Beyond Two Souls features probably the most solid final act they've ever put together, it still feels a bit half-baked. You go on a mission that has no real lead-up or explanation. The characters make some rather bizarre choices that seem to go against everything they've done up to that point. It's as if they decided the plot needed a villain, so they fabricated one within the last hour or so of the game. As a whole, Beyond Two Souls' story is decent for a video game. That's actually a pretty sad statement if you think about it. Video games deserve better narratives than we've gotten so far. And this isn't exactly the game that will save our preferred medium from itself. And while Quantic Dream tackles subjects usually only handled within the realm of film, it lacks the grace, subtlety, and class of its celluloid counterparts to do it properly. Technically, it's a triumph with some of the best looking graphics and facial capture I've ever seen in a video game. But if you're going to put so much emphasis on the story, it better be damn good. And honestly, it just isn't. Tell them to leave me the fuck alone, because next time, I'll kill everyone. Come on, Aiden. I think they get the message. 